We basically take students and put them in a, into a totally different environment. Students come here and they take online courses, they take face-to-face, -face, they take a hybrid course, and with that what they do is they're given an opportunity to hone their 21st century skills. These students not only you know receive a high school diploma, but they also receive a, a two-year associate degree that's transferable to a four-year college, and that degree is free. It's absolutely the best. Applied academics, they've all got netbooks, it's real world applications with things, it's working in teams, it's everything that the business community and what's needed in terms of a global workplace. Early College East is a STEM school, science, technology, engineering, and math. So our engineering classes are a great focus and a great part of the culture of our school. Every freshman takes the engineering one class. It is a design process class. The design process actually can be applied throughout any course. School was founded because of a need in this area, in this community for engineers and a variety of other artisans that were required across the base and throughout this area. Mr. Ebright is our engineer and he has provides a year-long instruction to all our freshmen. Our engineering class is divided into four sections. They study general engineering, aerospace, civil engineering and a robotics. I really love my engineering class. I think I think it's a cool thing that's add on to some of the other classes that you might be taking at the other high school. It just le helps you to learn how to work as a team more and better time management because if you don't have it done, you just don't have it done. Now, not everybody is going to be an engineer. What the process is, is that we give them an opportunity to see what engineering is about. We're fortunate that NC State and uh, the transfer program is right across the street. They have a polycom system where you do not have to leave to get your engineering degree. That is part of the partnership that helped us form this school and why it is, it is here in Havelock. Yeah. I saw the value on the screen. Did it read it? That's what I'm asking, yeah. Let's try this. There you are. No, it stayed at zero. Should it read it? What if I put two of these here just in case? Yeah, yeah, because because it was because the field of vision. No. No. What about it was probably an error. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Because I was wondering if you put if I put my hand there, then would it read it? But yeah, just count and put your hand. No. Yeah. Okay. It's yeah. our fault. They come to school. We see them from nine to five sometimes, and they know they could ask us for anything. We're here to help them. You walk in those classrooms, and due to the size. You know, you may see 12 or 13, 14, 15 maybe, students uh, with a teacher. Compared to a traditional public high school, those numbers could go as high as 30. Everything that we do as a school, like we have family celebrations where like once a month every Friday we'll do like something big just with the school. We can do stuff like that because there's not as many students here. So we get more attention from our teachers. They do help you a lot with whatever you're struggling with. We're very fortunate to have some very innovative teachers. We have a very young staff at this time. Mr. Wiggs is a teacher at Craven Early College that comes down every Monday. And during that time, he comes down to interact with our students. But every other day, Monday through Friday, he is on Skype or he is on uh, the Polycom system to interact with students. Both classes on both campuses interact at, at all times. Yes, Mr. Shirley. I was just going to say that even if it's an EDU site or that love site, it doesn't make it, you know, 100% always correct either. I mean, cross-referencing, yeah, especially in science, we're always learning new, new things, so well, websites get outdated and that kind of yeah, that's true. And there's just typos, human error. I think that everybody's one big family around here. At the schools I've been at before, we've had so many people suspended for fighting and things. We haven't had any issues here. 
it's been a couple months and you look back and you're like, when did I meet all these people? And it's yeah. like, I know everybody here. You know? <laughs> but then like you're looking forward to the next year too because then there's going to be all the new kids that come and you're going to get to meet them too. So because it's so much smaller, you do get to know everybody so much quicker, which is a lot of fun. To be able to add and subtract, what do I have to have? Common denominator. Common denominator. So what do I need to do first to get the common denominator? Multiply. multiply. Factor my denominators. How do I factor g squared plus 2d minus 8? Factor determinant. What multiplies give me negative 8, but adds give me positive 2? Positive 4. What about d squared minus 16? There's squares. Two plus four, two minus four. Oh, that's what I did wrong. Oh, that's what you did wrong. Yeah. So you said you didn't do this problem. We are unique in that we are kind of on a two separate campuses. We are located on Havelock Middle School between the elementary school and Havelock Middle School, but our students travel back and forth to the Lewis Red Building, which is on the Havelock campus where two of our classes are being held at this time. We also have classes in the Havelock Middle School as well that we utilize throughout the year. So we are unique. We travel. We do, as I would call it, a mini college campus in the sense that we have to travel between classes. It's a lot of walking. <laughs> yeah, walking back and forth and back. Like every other class. But it's good because we can kind of get the feel for like what types of classes we're going to be taking after yeah, this. In college. In right, college. and what the teachers are going to expect from you when you get to college. It is important to use the correct tone depending on the purpose of the office writing because if the wrong tone is used, then the purpose is misunderstood. And if the purpose is misunderstood, then the whole written document is misunderstood as well. It may even be interpreted as the exact opposite of what it was. So the correct tone, so using the correct tone for the written, for the author's writing is essential in understanding what the author has wrote and what the author's purpose is. Yeah, we're manipulated by this stuff constantly. We're bombarded, especially in advertising. Um, girls are, you know, girls are meant to, or a lot of ads meant for young ladies. The tone may be one that makes them question themselves or how beautiful they are, that type of thing. And what's the author, what's the purpose? To sell their products. To sell their products, to sell their lip gloss or sell their uh, you know, whatever, eyeliner, or whatever it is. My goal for each student to come through this doorway is for that they have the opportunity to get college credit so that they can move on to a four-year university or on to another university of their choice. In middle school, I didn't really have a choice. I was just like, well, I'm undecided. So, but when I came here, I just, I knew what I wanted to do. And we had some job shadowing. And so I had went to a children's doctor, a pediatrician, and um, yeah, it was good for that day. Yeah, I got to... Feel children's necks and do every, hear screaming children, but it was it was fun though. It, it was an experience. They experience in the early college program the college side in such a way that we are able to support them through that. A traditional high school wouldn't be able to do that. They're just not set up for that. And I say the highest uh, this past year, early college East, they were 99 percent proficient on the in the course state test. They did not make growth. I'm okay with that because when you're 99% proficient, it's kind of hard to show growth. I wish I'd had something like this when I was in high school, not that I'm that old, but this is definitely where I would have wanted to be. We had a club that went into the school board association video contest. And within that contest, we, we submitted a 30 second video for North Carolina public schools. So with that, North, we submitted this 30-second video with, this, with three students that had, done, that had provided the piece to that, and they received honorable mention, and they received a shout-out up at the School Board Association. I have the skills necessary to compete in the 21st century. Access to modern technology. My teachers help me achieve my goals.